Welcome back. Listen Up is examining arguments for and against euthanasia. Feelings of fear, vulnerability, pain, and anger come from all sides on this issue. We sat down to learn from one of Canada's leading ethicists. McGill University's Dr. Margaret Somerville has studied euthanasia and its surrounding issues for three decades. She published her findings in the book Death Talk, The Case Against Euthanasia and Physician-Assisted Suicide and she's presented her conclusions to the Quebec Government Commission on Dying with Dignity. Dr. Somerville, you've called the question of euthanasia the most important issue that we are going to wrestle with for thousands of years. Uh, it's the single most important question we're currently wrestling with. Um, and the, what we have to ask is why, after thousands of years of saying this is wrong, we suddenly think it might be a good idea. This is as old as the human race. We've always you know, got old, become sick, become terminally ill, suffered, and we're going to die. And yet, for thousands of years, societies like ours have said, no, it is wrong to kill people. You've researched euthanasia for the past 30 years. You've concluded it's a bad idea. Why? My primary reason for opposing it is that I think it's wrong for people to kill other people and that's what we're going to be legalizing in euthanasia. Everybody will be affected by what we, you know, what we decide on this. So everybody's, uh, I mean the pro-euthanasia people say, oh no, it'll be very voluntary and you won't have to have it if you don't want it and it's just a matter of giving people the choice. Um, I don't think that's necessarily true. I mean, the longest experiment we've had with this is the 30-year experience in the Netherlands. And what we've seen is a constant increase in the justifications for euthanasia. The Netherlands became the first country in the world to legalize euthanasia after a controversial law came into force in 2002. There's a petition in the Dutch parliament at present that the politicians have to consider because it's got 100,000 signatures on it and it's that euthanasia should be made available to anybody over the age of 70 who is simply tired of life. Um, the other recent change in the Netherlands is what's called the Groningen Protocol and that allows parents who have a disabled newborn baby to request euthanasia for it within the first month of its life. That's a slippery slope that has not gone unnoticed by advocates for the disabled. A group called the Euthanasia Prevention Coalition says there's no mercy in so-called mercy killing, and it represents a threat to people with disabilities. If you look at what happened in the Netherlands, the original restrictions were you had to be terminally ill, you had to be in unrelievable pain and suffering, you had to be competent, you had to be an adult, and you had to constantly request euthanasia. Now not one of those conditions applies. Advocates of euthanasia say this is individual autonomy. It is their right to be able to choose when and how they should be able to die. It seems to be resonating with the public. What's your opinion on that? I'm sure they're genuine in doing this, but I think they've got, they talk only at the individual level. They've got no concept, in my view, of what it will mean to uh, society and society's values and what it will mean for future generations. So euthanasia would be this exception that says, yes, killing each other is wrong. And not only that, but we're going to change our law to allow it. And so therefore we set a whole norm for society and we affect what I would argue is our most fundamental shared value, which is that we don't kill each other, putting it another way, that we have respect for every individual life and respect for human life in general. So we're going to change the law to allow that and we're going to have our doctors doing it, our physicians carrying out these acts of killing. This really does have the capacity of eroding those fundamental foundational values uh, on, w on the basis of which we relate both to each other and we relate to our society and we relate to future generations. When we come back, taking the journey through a long, slow death. Next. There's always hope. There's always, always hope.